This is Twit. Okay, so for the third time in the last year, a neighbor who had heard that I knew my way around computers stopped Lori and me during our nightly walk oh, Lord. to ask what she should do about her website. The common denominator in all three instances, which is why I'm mentioning this today, is that these people were not webmasters, nor were they people who were content with having Facebook host their pages. They were professionals who wanted to have their own website located at their own domain. So they got a referral from someone else or perhaps noticed at the bottom of someone's website a mention that the site was created by, you know, websites are us or Johnny's websites or whatever. One way or the other, they found a service uh, and they used that third party service. You know, typically it's a one man shop, right? A, a, a DBA firm uh, to function as an intermediary between the different things they needed, a domain name registrar and a hosting provider to register their domain name of their choice, create a website and populate it with their content. These relationships are almost always problematic because a, a great deal of time can be spent getting everything set up. Then, of course, the website's owner invariably wants to make changes, which are met with grumbling of various degrees by the webmaster who just wants his client to shut up and you know, pay to maintain the site as is without actually doing any further maintenance. You know, the, the, since the people who own the content and are having it put there are typically unable to manage the site themselves, it's a constant problem. So every listener here is now thinking to themselves, okay, Gibson, we all know this. What's the point? The point is what I have seen over and over is that these relationships do not age well over the long term or are at risk of not, and in these cases have not. The reason is the domain name. Without exception, none of these regular nice people who have their own website under a domain name that they originally chose, having had it for years and having invested emotionally, intellectually, and spiritually have any actual control over what they consider to be their domain name. In every case, their domain name was registered by someone else for them yeah. in the beginning. I talk about this on the radio show a lot. Yep. I'm not surprised, Leo. Yep. It's yep. got to be a, a problem that is beginning to happen more and more because domain names are becoming, you know, they're beginning to age. So at a time when none of that accumulated value existed in the name. This was all created. And without an understanding of the way domain name property is managed, they never stopped to wonder what would happen in the future. Whoever it was who set all this up for them had an account with a registrar, and it was, you know, under their account that their domain name was and still probably still is registered. This all came to mind recently when I was explaining this to the most recent neighbor who stopped me, uh, you know, uh, that, and what I explained was that where their domain names were concerned, the rule is not that possession is nine-tenths of the law. With domain names, possession is 100% of the law. Yeah. It's, the o it's the only law. The only thing, it, you if know, you had a copy, if it was a trademark, you might be able to, you know, rest it back. Uh, you could appeal, you know, if it's your trademark and somebody else has the domain name. That's happened in the past. True, but although at a great deal of expense yeah. and attorneys and court cases right, and everything. Right. Well, no, so, I think uh, I think ICANN has an appeal process. It's not as complex, not as bad as all that. Oh, so you don't have to actually you sue go to the. ICANN. the, the right. And 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 right. get it. You could say to I can't. Hey, you know I'm McDonald's, and this guy is not. <laughs> Can I have my name right. back? Yeah, right. So and and this sort of puts me in mind. Uh, we've talked about the the problem of of somebody you know dying with a whole bunch of passwords which are not known to anyone else. Uh, the time before this most recent time, 
uh, the longtime webmaster of a different neighbor actually had died rather suddenly, uh, being survived by his wife. Eventually, the web and email services, which continued for some time, were terminated, and my neighbor went in search of a solution. The man's wife was nice, but she knew nothing about technology, and my neighbor learned that all of his other clients were also furious mm. and fuming mm -hmm. that their web domains collectively had all been allowed to expire, Oy. had then been snatched up, and were now hosting clickbait pages. Oh, God. So I had to give that neighbor the bad news that she really had no practical recourse. Um, and in this most recent case, the webmaster is an 80-year-old geriatric good friend of the website owner. Working through him, she explained, she's created an extensive website filled with links and artwork, plays and songs. Uh, it is a content-rich labor of love. And she's been frantic that something might happen to it. So I told her that I could easily relieve some of her worry by cloning her entire website into a directory so that at least it's all okay. of its content yeah. would be archived for safekeeping. And so the next morning I did that, and she was hugely relieved. But I explained the situation to her about the control of domain names and that if anything should ever happen to this person, in the absence of some sort of plan, she stood to lose any and all use of that domain because of the way it was registered. She had no claim to it whatsoever. It, it actually is not hers. It's his. And I said, so anyway, so I did a little bit of who is poking around, and I discovered that he's using a service called Enom, E-N-O-M, which is for domain name resellers. Enom, it tur turns out, is a branch of Hover, my own chosen registrar with whom I am very happy. So I told her that the best thing she could do would be to create her own account at Hover, then arrange with her friend to transfer the domain with all of its existing settings intact from his Hover account to hers. She said it would be a bit dicey because he was a friend and she didn't wish to offend him. So I told her, okay, in the first place, he will at least understand that it is an entirely valid concern for anyone to have. So... If transferring the domain to her now is not an option, could he at least explain what he has in place for dealing with his own potential inability, for whatever reason, to continue? And so, as a consequence of all of this, I just wanted to take a moment to mention this to everyone who's listening, because even though we all probably manage our own domain properties, it must be that we're all aware of others who are in a similar place. And it might be worth asking them about the plans their domain name providers have for their domain names upon any event that might cause their registrations to expire and be lost. And, of course, and, the strong advice is if you're going to have a domain name, register it yourself. Don't let yes. some third party register it for you. Because yes. you're not controlling it. You don't control it. Yes. And, and I was impressed. I looked at the registration, and he had renewed it two days after it, two, two, two days after one month before expiration. So that is to say, it was probably set up for auto renew. Yeah. It was, it was renewing annually, you know, so it, like it, it was, it looked like he was tending it well. But, and of course, the, the flip side is if you are, registering your own domain then you do have that responsibility you need to absolutely make sure that it is you know you've got, that it's set to auto renew that, that you're maintaining a, a current email address for them so they're able to notify you any problems that you're that they've got a credit card that they're able to charge I mean so the, so the point is if you're going to take on that responsibility you know there is some responsibility that comes with it but boy uh you know, it's, it's, I'm glad to hear that you're saying you're seeing the same oh, thing among your yeah, your yeah. callers on the weekend. I say it all the time. And she should approach. I mean, if this guy's a friend, this 80 year old guy's a friend, just say, "Can I transfer it over to me? Because it's mine." Yep. <laughs> right. You know, he did it probably as a favor to her, 
Because he knew how. Because the reason people don't want to do this is they don't know how to set up the DNS to point to their website. And you know, I understand this is a little techy. Uh, yep. So I understand why they don't do it. But yeah, you it, it, you need control. You need to control it, especially if it's a business.